Sam, one of the big challenges of our time today is uh, unemployment, particularly among youth. Uh, recently, uh, the new Pope, Pope Francis, said we're in danger of having a lost generation. Uh, we have extraordinarily high uh, unemployment rates among youth, whether it's in parts of Europe like Spain, uh, in the Middle East, um, Africa, uh, India. Yeah. What are your thoughts with regard to this matter of employment? We all recognize that unemployment is the biggest challenge in the 21st century. We also recognize that the way we created employment in the 20th century is not going to work in the 21st century. In 20th century, a lot of employment came out of government and factories production. Agricultural numbers have gone down all over the world. Now manufacturing numbers are going down also because of automation and all. Service society numbers are picking up. But for younger people to find jobs, we really need more entrepreneurs today. All our education is designed to really take a job. Every college graduate, when he comes out of college, says, where do I get a job? We don't teach them how to create a job. So first, you got to change the mindset and the education system. Saying when you graduate, you don't have to look for a job. You have to create a job. It's a big shift in thinking. That's what 21st century would need. Then there is a mismatch between what you learn in schools and colleges versus what industry needs. We find that the fresh graduate you hire doesn't have the skills that you need at work. Some can't write, comprehend, communicate, are not team players, they can't work in a group, and you just don't have the soft skills that you need. Then you have skill requirements. A lot of the kids want to go to college, but they don't want to get the skills that you need to get a job done, whether it is skill in industry like hotels, airlines, you know, all these industries require special skills. You know, medical technician. Yeah. So you don't have to be a doctor to get a job. So we are finding that a lot more emphasis on skill development and giving them new tools. I'll give you one example. Many years ago, I had a carpenter come home to hang a painting. And he was just about to hammer a screw. And I hold his hand. And I said, you cannot hammer a screw. You know, you can only take a screwdriver and, you know, use screwdriver. He said, I do it all the time. So I sat down with him, drew a picture, explained to him the physics of screw and nail and said, let me see your toolkit. So I see his toolkit and it looked like his great grandfather had used the same toolkit. So we have not given him the right education about what screw is and how screw works, not given him new tools, not given him new knowledge. And how do we expect him to do his job? You know, we are not prepared to invest in skill development. To me, for young people, skill development is one major option that many overlook. Another thing, 20 years ago, we did a quick study on the amount of investment required to create one job in agriculture, health, transport, government, construction, and various sectors. To our surprise, we learned that the 
least amount of investment is required in construction job. Interesting. Huge amount of investment is required in railways, Salakam, because the asset requirement yeah. is huge. So if you begin to spend more on construction, you create more jobs. Yeah. You know, in country like India, there is a shortage of some 20 million homes. There goes your job creation activity. But no one is looking at properly. And if you create more entrepreneurs, they will create jobs. Government is not capable of creating jobs. And a lot of these big manufacturing companies don't create tens of thousands of jobs that we used to create in the past. But unfortunately, our universities are not equipped. And then you have this whole sort of a technology to find the match. Fortunately, with internet, you have online jobs that you can find. You have, you know, opportunities to connect people. Again, we are not really using it effectively. Yeah. You, know. you know, in an earlier segment on health, we talked about taking personal responsibility uh, for your health and for what you eat and, and your lifestyle. And it seems we need to, as part of the educational process, need to reorient, uh, uh, set reset expectations for young people to take, what does it mean to take responsibility, to have a career or multiple careers? So they're not thinking they're just beholden to what jobs there are available today, as you're saying, to be able to create jobs and to be able to dynamically look at their careers, get more education as they need to, to further enhance uh, their skill prospects, their job prospects, their work altogether. So there's something in this that's... Uh, See, there are two other areas which need little more attention, according to me, when you talk of employment and jobs. One is pension programs and labor unions. Today, in every part of our economy, pension has become a big burden. It was designed when people used to live, maybe 65. You know, people assume that you retire at 55, you have 10-year pension, you are done. Now people live to be 90. Pension program was not designed for people living to be in 90s. So there's a huge burden because of pension program. According to me, that's an obsolete concept. But you can't say this because people will react. Unions, to some extent, is an obsolete concept. You, know, you organize yourself as sort of a user group or something. But unions have been too powerful, too demanding. Their wages go up, they're unreasonable, and all that. So future generation will have to recognize that there may not be unions and there may not be even pension. You got to take responsibility for your retirement. And you can't dump it on your, you know, company because company may not be equipped. They may not exist tomorrow. See, earlier companies used to last for 40 years, 50 years, 100 years. Now companies could be structured to do a job. It could be a project. You set up a company for this project. That project is done. Company is dissolved. You move on. But today, for entrepreneur to start a company, it's very difficult in many countries. I know in India, it is very difficult to start a company. And it's even more difficult to close a company. Interesting. So government will have to change their policies to make it easier for young people to start a company, to close a company, give them financial help, incentives. To encourage young people to do their own thing. Yes, yes. Today, you encourage big companies with big land and big requirement because you give them incentives. We'll give you free land, we'll give you free power. But what about a guy who has two people to work? There are no incentives for them. Again, the whole thing has to be changed, new mindset, and these are the needs of the 21st century. Little fellows are going to create lots of jobs, big fellows are not going to create lots of jobs. 
And the other issue also is office space. You know, in your generation and my generation, we assume that if you start a company with 100 people, you need 100 offices. Now, you can start a company with 100 people and you may have five That's office right. for five people. Everybody could be working from home. Yeah. So telecommute, using new technology, new tool to work wherever you are. Jobs of tomorrow are not going to be eight hours a day jobs. It is not about going to work at nine, coming back at five. It's 24-7. It could be working anywhere, anytime. So the concept of office is going to change. Concept of work is going to change. Concept of employment is going to change. You will have contracts for three years, two years, five years, one year, and you manage your stuff. Our systems are not in tune with this. Yes. So if I were to really summarize my thoughts on employment, I would say, one, without emphasis on entrepreneurship, you cannot create jobs of tomorrow. For that, education has to change so that kids coming out, out of college don't look for jobs but create jobs. Two, government will have to provide incentives and policies to start more businesses, more entrepreneurs, more innovators to explore new ways of doing it. Then we'll have to decide where minimum investment is required to create jobs. Looks like construction is one and there may be others like that. Then the whole idea of company will change. Today, company means everybody comes to work, they all work together, they are all there, they may be all over. You know, they may be in five different continents. Yes. They don't have to be physically here. How do you deal with immigration on that? You know, we haven't thought through all this. Everywhere I look around, I find that the mindset is that of 20th century. Need is of 21st century. We need to create millions and millions of new jobs. And there is so much that needs to be done in this world. Everywhere you look around, from cleaning garbage, to managing water, to improving sanitation, to creating new health paradigm, to providing different kind of education, everywhere there are jobs. But you can't find people to do those jobs because they've been trained to do something else. Yes. That's the challenge.